So hey there. Um, so if you've been following along with my digitization project, you know that I have recently um, sent off uh, a bunch of 35 millimeter slides and three reels of film. And I'm using a service provided by a company called Forever. And this is their website. And so what I did is I came to their digitization or their digitized page and I selected a box that was um, what I needed. So I chose the standard box because I just needed pretty much standard things. And then down here are the sizes and I chose the 20 item one because um, so like 20 sets of 25 pictures or 25 slides or 25 negatives. Um, and so I needed at least 20 and um so you can you can actually watch my video of unpacking this box and then i also have a video uh where i uh got everything ready to send to forever to get digitized so at any rate it looks like they're having a decent sale um not trying to sell anything here i'm just merely pointing out for the holidays, they're probably having a little bit of a sale here. Um, I will tell you that the sale that I took advantage of was a little bit better than this one. So always be on the lookout. If you're looking to do this, keep an eye on it until it's in your price range. That's my words of advice. So the other thing that I have is I have their storage. So preserve and share. And this is basically Oh, they've got this stuff on sale too. Um, this is basically where my permanent digital home will be or is in the process of being because I'm work slowly working on it. And so when I um, sent in my box with all these slides and these reels of film, um, I asked them to go ahead and put them in my uh, forever storage account. So let me head there. So this is my storage account, kind of like my little home page here. It's actually my profile page. But you can see I have um, a library tab, which is just everything. And then I also have an albums tag, which I only have four at the moment. And then a tags tab, which I heavily use actually right now because it's basically tagged by person. And you'll see why in just a minute when I show you what I'm, how I'm organizing everything and getting everything um, that they digitized organized. That's the point of this video. I think I forgot to say that. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Um, so let me go back to my library here real quick and, um, real quick, let me just say for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Julie Cahill Tarr and I am with Genealogy in Action and I provide tips and tricks to make your genealogy life easier and more productive so that you can find your elusive ancestors quickly and confidently. So if you're a dedicated genealogist looking to upload your research skills, you are in the right place. Now, my forever journey has been a little bit of a segue from my complete mission um, with Genealogy in Action, but at the same time, I know that a lot of my followers are very much into getting um, their stuff digitized and organized and preserving it and sharing it so this really isn't completely out of the the wheelhouse of what i usually provide in my videos um but it is a little bit different than usual so all right so what i want to do today is this is a behind the scenes i'm going to take um i'm going to explain what the process was and then how i am working with that. <laughs> I don't really know how to put it. So let me just go ahead and get started. Okay, so the main library is just everything that you have. And if you, I'm going to kind of jump down here. 
uh, to show you that like I've got stuff um, from like April 2022 and you can tell that these photos are not from April 2022 that was when they, they were uploaded but for example these photos these are wedding photos from November 13th 2021 and that is actually an accurate accurate date and then again I've got you know like 78 72 71 these are all pretty accurate because I have um, put in the actual date or a year so you'll see a lot of uh like July 1 because this was the slide was labeled July uh, 70. So I didn't know what day in July. My guess is it was like a 4th of July picnic or something, but I don't know that. And my mom doesn't remember. <laughs> so um, some of these are kind of labeled with a July 1 or December 1 or January 1 because I don't know the exact date and I can't just put in a year. It has to default to something. So if I put in 1970, it will default to January 1st. If I put in a month in 1970, it will default to the first of whatever month I put in, um, which is unfortunate. But that's just kind of the way the program works or the storage app, app works so anyways that's an introduction to the library i'm going to go back up here to the top and we're going to go to albums so all of those let me go back here real quick all of this stuff here at the top all of this um on december 7th is when they um uploaded everything to my forever account so here's three videos the three um reels of film that i sent in and then the rest, it's about 400 slides. So I'm gonna go to albums and they created this album called the Forever Digital Conversion with the number that was assigned to me for this project. So if I go to it, I have sub uh, albums and these are all the batches of slides. So what they did is there's like a little number on the sticker that you put on the um batch and so this was batch eight um, my film transfers were um also have batch numbers as well so you can see like this one was one this one was four and this one was five um let me go back here so i've been i processed three of them i processed processed six seven and 12 don't ask me why no it's because there were some photos in 12 that i needed to go with six and share with a cousin so i processed them at the same time but my mom has gone through all of the albums and she's gone in and put in notes so let's go here and go into a photo okay so i'm in a photo here and my mom just wrote Jack and question mark, meaning Jack, this is my grandfather and some guy who she has no idea who he is. <laughs> so that's all she did is went through all these descriptions. She has um, administrator rights, so she could go in and change all this stuff. She could change the name if she wanted to, the date, um, tags, whatever. But I just told her to go ahead and deal with the descriptions that I was gonna deal with everything else. So, that, that's all fine and dandy. I could come in here and go ahead and change um, this as well. Like I could go ahead and change the date from here. Um, scroll a little too far. Um, but there are some things that I can't do here to do in another program. So that program is Forever's Historian program, and it's an actual desktop app. And I'm going to kind of do a walkthrough of what my process is. So let me go back to this album. We're gonna actually work with this batch 15, and it has 25 files. Don't worry, I won't torture you with doing every single file. We will just edit that out and come back to it at the end and finish, okay? So don't worry. So the easiest way to do this is to select one of them and then I'm going to hit shift 
and select the last one and it goes ahead and collects everything in here and then i'm going to hit download and it tells me my download with metadata was received you'll receive a notification when it's ready it's usually pretty fast what i'm going to do is close this and then come back to my profile oops that's not what i wanted but that's good enough and go to this little profile icon <laughs> And you see this little bell and it has a one. It's telling me now that I have a batch ready. So here's my 25 um, images that are downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it's going to uh, bring me a zip file. So I'm gonna open the zip file and I have, as you can see down here, I have 25 items. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to come over to this folder. That's kind of my place for storing stuff uh, that I need to process. And I'm gonna create a folder for batch 15. And I'm going to paste all of those images in there. And again, we're down to 25, so we're good to go. Um, I can get rid of this folder. And then I already have historian open. Um, and I want to go to, so I'll just go to all for the moment. And I apologize if I sound a little scratchy today. It's really, really cold out and really, really dry. So my head is just super super dry and my throat is very very scratchy today so i apologize for that okay so i'm at all of my photos that are in um historian and historian is basically a photo management um application or uh software program and you can see over here i have uh, tags and all sorts of things so We'll go through this as we go through some of the photos. So just bear with me for a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to come to this batch 15 folder. I'm going to select all, I'm going to drag and drop. And I get this um, import options and um, I wanna keep the original file name. So I'm gonna change them myself manually. Um, I can import with tags, and I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, with the to process tag, uh, exclude duplicates from import, and run facial recognition. I'm going to leave those unchecked. Okay, so now I have a whole new screen. These are images that were imported today, 1218. Um, your today may be a different day, but this <laughs> today for me is 12, 18, 22. Um, we are going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a couple photos, how I do them. And then uh, I will finish them and come back to you with what I do afterwards. So this first photo is um, a sign uh, where they had the reception. So I am using for weddings, I'm using a um, file name of the groom and the bride's um, surnames, wedding, and then the year. In parentheses, and then a number. So I always start with one and I use zero, zero in front of it. Um, so that's that. And then we have a date that we're going to change and that would be 10, 8, 1967 and write a description. So, um, the sign, oops, <laughs> I can type for Joseph. Hill and Jean Miller wedding uh, wedding reception at the Holiday Inn 
in Melrose Park. Okay. So I've got that. And there's no faces in this one, but I do need to deal with tags still. So I can deal with them here. And first of all, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two process tag um, because I don't need it anymore. I can do it on all of them at the end, which is probably what I will do. Um, but we've got events and weddings, and I do have one for them because I've already done some. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> go back to my view here. Okay. Um, I do already have a tag for them because I, I have processed other photos uh, from the wedding. Um, and then I also have locations. Uh, and I believe I added Melrose Park. Yes. So I do already have these. If I didn't, I could create them right now or I could create them as I go to tag them. So I'm right clicking on this and I want to tag with and I want to um, choose that wedding. I want to choose that location and I think that is all I want um, and I like I said I can create a new tag here if I wanted to like if I came here and said oh I don't have one for Melrose Park I can create it right here so I don't have to do it over here uh, but I can either way so I'm going to click the, the add button and now you can see over here on the tags it has added both of those tags and the tags correlate to, whoops, wrong tab. <laughs> um, they correlate to these tags here. So I actually have the Joseph Cahill and Jean Marie wedding tag right here, and there's already two photos in it. Hmm, there should be three. There were two of these. I'll have to look into that. I must not have tagged that one. <laughs> or maybe I got rid of the duplicate. I don't know. Um, but that's what these are for. Um, I can arrange them into albums later, but for right now, because I have all of these slides, I have 400 slides alone. Um, and I have like hundreds of photographs that are already scanned and I need to move over. And if I wanna look for somebody in particular or an event in particular or a location in particular, I can do that using these tags. I don't have to create albums and I might not create albums. I mean, I probably will, but I, I don't know yet. I haven't quite decided, but tags right now for me are the way to go. So if I want to see pictures of me, I can do that. So there's three in here of me. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to un let you understand what the um, tag correlation was between um, the storage, forever storage and historian. So, all right, so I pretty much finished with this picture. So I'm going to, uh, the other thing I wanna do too, and I can do this at the, at the end, I can select all of them and do it at the end, but I'm just gonna show it to you right now before I forget. Um, there's this, print status and there's a need to print which is which is currently selected already printed and don't want to print now you can use this for those very things however a lot of us are using it to um, help us understand what we have in storage and not in storage so need to print means it needs to be processed for me Already printed means I've already processed it and I've already moved it to forever storage online and don't want to print for me means I need to, it's been processed, but I need to move it to forever storage online. So now I want to click do not or don't want to print and then I will filter those and move them. So we'll show you, I, I will show you that once I've processed all of these photos. And again, I'm not going to do them all on, on video for you. Don't worry. We're not going to have to sit through all of that. So let me process another one with um, some people. Um, hey, that's great. I don't know who this guy is. We're just going to, my mom didn't know. So we're just going to ignore that face. But this one, 
I actually did pick up my grandfather. That is my grandfather. So I'm going to click the little check mark because it is actually correct. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to copy, oops, copy this because I'm going to keep using it over and over again. And strangely enough, it copied the date for me. I'm not sure why and it gave the time, but okay. Oops. And I've just been putting in the name. Oops. And quite honestly, I don't even really have to put in descriptions because everything that I put in the description is going to be, it's going to be tagged. So it's already tagged with, um, his, his real name is John, but he goes by Jack. So he's already tagged and the wedding's going to be tagged the event. So it's kind of like, do I really need to put in a description? So I've been putting in just kind of minimal descriptions basically. So this one just needs um, a tag for the wedding and a tag for the location. Now, if I had ceremony photos in here, which I don't believe I do. Oh, here's one right here. So this one actually would be um, a different location because the location was somewhere else and then this is at the house um and that would also be a different location this one could be at the house or the church unfortunately they're both in the same town so i can get away with putting that same tag in but so that's kind of uh oh maybe these are at the reception because look here's a reception photo right here and it has the same wood paneling so not really sure. I might just leave those alone. Um, but I do have that ceremony photo. So let's see. What else do we got? I don't even know that my mom. Oh, that's my my Uncle Bob. Okay. And I did find him too. That's great because I don't have a picture of him at this age. So impressive. It, 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 the more photos get put in, the better it gets at facial recognition. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. That one's okay. So now it's tagged with this face tag, and that's these right here. So where's my family? Julie's family. So here's his tag right here. And it's only showing me one photo because it's showing me uh, tagged with him and imported today. If I didn't have that imported today, it would show all of them, but we're not gonna mess with that. <laughs> Um, this one appears to be a duplicate of this one, but uh, I'm going to try to find ones that don't have faces already. I bet you this one won't. Okay, this one, uh, it does have one. It does have one, but it doesn't have the other. Okay, perfect. So I can show you how to how to do this. Okay, so this one, it found my mom, so I'll check that off. But what it didn't find was my grandfather. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to change the file name before I forget. Uh, let's see, three, I think we were on three. 28, 1967. Of course, she wrote dad and me, so... <laughs> Not me, me, like Julie mean, it's my mom. Daughter, Jean, down the aisle, I think it's spelled aisle. Okay, at her wedding. Okay, so some of these I can get a little bit more descriptive, but um, I mean, it's pretty obvious from the photo what's going on there. But you'll see that my um, grandfather wasn't like it didn't provide a face and a, and a guess as to who it might have been. So I'm going to double click on this, bring it up 
I still have my right panel here. And I'm going to click on this face button up here. So when I do that, you can see that my mom's already highlighted or tagged. I'm going to create one for my grandfather. That's not so good. Let's try. There we go. And I'm going to select a person. And fortunately, he was recent, so he's right there. And now he is tagged as well. And then this one, I can right click on this and I can tag with the wedding and the location, which this one is Elmhurst. So there I go. I have the two face tags, which convert to regular tags when you bring them over into forever storage and it's the location tag and the event tag. So that's pretty much it. And then if I want to, when I'm done with this one, I can just click that little X and close it out and come back to this screen with the 25 that I brought in. And so I'm just going to keep going through all of these and doing the same process for all of them. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what happens after they're all done. So as I've been going through these, there were a couple that I wanted to call attention to. So um, I'm going to start with this one right here. And when I open it up, it's got um, this gentleman tagged. And my mom didn't know who these people were. So in this instance, I want to actually remove the tag because this facial recognition recognition isn't correct because Marcella is a female and this is clearly a male. So I am going to um, click this little down arrow and do ignore face and it will remove that tag. And so this one will just be like an unknown photograph. Um, this one, I just wanted to show how to add a tag because I don't think I did that earlier. So first of all, it's trying to say that it's my grandfather. No, uh, I'm not sure which John K. Hill that is. Not my grandfather. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. He's like 90. His number is 96. So anyways, sorry. Um, so I'm going to click on this down arrow and then I am going to add a new tag. But first I need to copy his last name so I can spell it properly. <laughs> so add new tag uh, he doesn't you'll notice that after a lot of my people's names i have numbers and those are the reference id numbers that are in my legacy database so that way i can keep track of who's who so like this john cahill is 1348 i have one that's 6710 my grandfather is 96 because i have a gazillion different john cahills for example so that's how i keep track of them is by their um, id number so wayne isn't going to get one because he is not related to us so um when i do my categories i have a category for non-family and family friends so I'm going to use that one and I'm going to stick him there. And now he has a tag and we're going to go on that one. And then there was this one. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things here because there's, uh, they're all, um, Wayne is now, uh, put in here because he wasn't earlier it was it was showing a different name but now that I, I tagged him here it's now recognizing his face here so uh, Leo is correct Wayne is correct my dad is correct and my uncle is correct so I just marked them all with that little check mark so that they were um, tagged appropriately and they're all correct um, this one, um, I just wanted to show you really quickly that you can, use, um, this historian, 
One of the reasons I use it um, is because I can do the facial tags and the facial recognition. I can't do that in the online forever storage. So I could create tags for people. I just can't attach that tag to a person's face like I can here. And I like having that ability so that I can come to a photo, say uh, this one where there's a lot of people and I just click on the face thing here and it tells me everybody who everybody is. So I, I personally like that because like in 20 years, I'm not going to remember who these people are. They're tagged in here, but I don't know who's who, right? So that's why I like using historian. The other reason I like using it is because in this instance, I don't particularly like the coloring here. So I'm going to try to do an auto fix and see what I can get. So usually I like this um, perfectly clear natural skin tone one. And that's not bad, but I found that I like this one probably the best out of all of them. It's still kind of got that orange tint to it, but I can deal with that. But they look, their faces look a little bit more clearer and they just look a little better. So I'm going to save that. And they're already tagged, so we're good to go there. And then um, one other thing, um, like on this one, for example, so because I added Wayne just a little bit ago, um, now he's showing up as uh, the facial recognition. So I'm going to go ahead and mark him uh, correct. However, um, this one, the, the, the lady here, unfortunately, she is not tagged properly. So I need to do two things. I need to create a new tag for her. And she's not family, so she doesn't get a number, but she does get the family friends uh, thing. So now she is tagged with a new tag. And then finally, um, if I ever wanna like change a tag, so in this photo, it, my, my parents are correct, but this, let me pull this one up. This, this lady is not correct. This is not uh, Aunt Helen. This is actually Aunt Florence. I have two Aunt Florences, but this is the uh, sister of my grandmother. Um, so here I'm going to, instead of adding a new tag, because I already have a tag for her, I'm just going to click select a different tag and then choose from the list. And she is a McMahon. Let's get, there we go. Here and here she is. So now, I don't know why I didn't do that, but usually it picks her up pretty good. So. I don't know if it's the angle or what, but at any rate, that's how you would change one. Okay, so I'm almost done with these. Um, I need to finish a few. I just wanted to show you a couple of those things before I forgot. So I'm going to finish up here and I will be back to show you the rest. Okay, so I've finished... Um, changing the file names and the date and descriptions and all the facial tags and all the other tags um, that I wanted to add. So I still have a couple things I need to do. First of all, I'm going to select all and I want to tag. Oh, okay. I've got this one. Unselect that one. There we go. <laughs> I forgot I had done that manually on this one. Um, so now this two process tag comes up and I want to take it and I want to get rid of it. 
because they're already processed and ready to go. So the signal to myself right now is um, that print feature. So I can either click on this little arrow thing or I can right click on the photo. It doesn't really matter which, you get the same menu. And I wanna go down and I want to say, don't want to print. And so now all of them will say, don't want to print. I had them all selected and this one already had it because I had done that before yes so okay just want to make sure so this way if I want to continue processing batches throughout the day or over a couple of days and I don't want to keep moving them over every time I do a batch of 25 moving them back over to storage and doing that this way, they're kind of flagged in a way that um, allows me to know what I need to do. So I can come up here. Well, let me do let me do this. Let me go to all. So now I, I have all of my photos, everything that I have in here so far. So I am going to say print status up here is I don't want to print. And now I have, I still have a leftover apparently. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't undo those. That's why. Well, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so I sort of fixed that. I need to go back and fix that. What happened was, is I forgot to change the print status on the last batch that I did. That's why they were showing up because I know I moved them. Um, so that was my bad. I didn't complete the process. <laughs> in, in all fairness, it was my third batch. I'm still getting used to the process that I'm trying to develop and use and so I just forgot that last step. And in fact, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my list of steps and it actually, it is there. It is the final step. So I'm surprised that I missed it. I was probably just glad to be done. I was really tired when I was working on that one. Anyways, um, so I have the 25 that I just did. These are all the, the wedding pictures that I just did. So what I want to do is I want to um well real real quick part of the reason that a lot of people use this status to kind of know what's in uh their forever storage account and what's not or what's ready to go there or whatever you could use tags that is the alternative but the problem is you'd have to remember to remove them both here and in forever storage because they're going to go over to forever storage um so that's just kind of an extra step or extra two steps that you have to do whereas this we're just going to unflag them as to print or don't want to print which we'll do in a minute here but right now i have these 25 up that i want to go ahead and i want to send them to storage so i'm going to click on this share tab up here and click on forever and I'm already connected, so it's just asking me what I want to send. If I had one photo selected, it would ask me if I wanted to do that one. If I had selected them all or five of them or whatever, it would ask me that here if I wanted to do the selected ones. In this case, I want to do all 25. Um, I'm going to show you the advanced options so you can do some manipulating here if you want to use the current file name, which is what I'm going to use, you could uh, use the item properties name or numbered names beginning with, and I honestly don't know exactly what that is. I just leave my current file names. I just do it manually. It's no big deal to me. It's copy paste and change the number. That's it. 
Um, I want to leave everything the original image size. I don't want to change the aspect ratio and the rest of this. I don't really know exactly what it's all about. So, or apparently you can put a, a watermark on if you want, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to come up and ask me if it wants to prevent duplicates. Well, it's going to ask me if I want to send it to an album and if so, where. But it also is asking me if I want to prevent duplicate uploads. And in this case, I'm going to uncheck it because remember, all of these photos are still in storage, right? They're all, why do I keep going to my dashboard? <laughs> They're all um, in this, which one were you, 15? They're all, they're all still here, right? So if I send these photos preventing duplicates, then I'm going to run into problems because it's going to, um, it's going to find these in forever storage and say, oh, that's a duplicate, that's a duplicate, and it's not going to upload it. But the problem is I want it to upload because their file names are renamed, the tags are put in, the date is put in, all of that stuff is, is put in here, and I want those to be the photos that are the ones that are in storage. I hope that made sense. So I'm going to go ahead and upload. It'll take a few seconds, maybe a minute or so. Okay, so they're all sent over there. I want to go over and I want to confirm that. So I'm going to go to my library because that's where I sent them was just directly to my library. And I'm going to scroll down. See here, this isn't the right batch of them. Um, they're all kind of in a weird order, but here's like that sign. Here's my Uncle Bob. So these are the ones that we did. So these are um, I think the original ones that were uploaded because I keep going to 67. Here we go. So if you look at the, if you click or hover over this little info thing, you can see it's got Cahill Miller wedding 1967 010. So that's my designation. It's got the date in there and the date uploaded is today as opposed to the 7th, which is what the other ones would say. So we know that these are the correct ones. So right now I have two sets of the same photos and I want to get rid of the batch that's up here, which is the batch that's in the album. Um, that's probably a little confusing. So the originals are all in the library. Every single image you bring in, whether it's a photo, a document, a film, or an audio recording, a video recording, whatever it is, it will be here in this library first and foremost. What you choose to do with it after that is up to you. This one photo right here could be in 10 different albums for whatever reason you might want it in 10 different albums. And that's perfectly fine, but there is only one iteration of the photo right here. Okay, so I hope that made sense. So I wanna get rid of these, um, but I don't know which ones exactly were in that batch, right? Cause like, and just to prove that they're different, see here's, I'm hovering over that info thing and it has the original file name. The date taken is not in 1967. The date uploaded is December 7th. That's not today, which is the 18th. Uh, may not be the 18th when you're watching this. Um, but at any rate, um, these are the original ones that uh, forever uploaded when they digitized them. So those are all grouped into those albums so that's where I'm going to go is to the album and it was 15. Basically going to select all of them and I'm going to click remove. 
And if I just say yes, remove, what's going to happen is they are going to re be removed from this album only. If I go back to my library, they're still going to be there unless I click this button. Also move to delete bin. And it gives you a warning. This will remove the files from all locations, including library, which is your master copy, albums, tags, print projects, open photo, print orders, etc. So be careful when you're doing this. Um, but I am deliberately doing this because I want I don't want du duplicate copies. I don't need those original um, files. I've already downloaded them and I've already uploaded them um, with with the metadata that I want. So I'm going to say yes, remove. It brings me back to the album. There's nothing in this album. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the album. And then if I go back to the library, You'll see that they're gone because they were kind of ahead of these if i remember correctly no they were after the the station wagon you can see that all of them are gone and just to clarify my batch was different this is the batch that i uh, brought into historian made changes to and then re-uploaded them here so they're all still here all intact all done the way that I want them. So we've done everything in storage because I removed that album and the, the original photos. So I still have 437 files. <laughs> um, the last thing I need to do is come back to historian and do what I didn't do with that other batch that I'm gonna have to fix uh, here in a minute, which I won't do for you guys because it's a waste of your time because I'm going to do it right now for this batch. And that is, to change the print to already printed. So that way I know these are already, um, and I did that for all, I did a, I, I selected one of them and I did a control A for all, it's probably command A for uh, Mac. Um, and then I just did that, uh, I clicked on the arrow, did the print and said already printed. And now they all say it, Let's see right here. Down at the bottom here. So they all changed. So when I refresh this, they're all gone because the criteria for this was today and items I don't want to print and they're no longer the case. So I am going to show you something while I'm here. Um, I'm going to go to all again. And then I'm going to do print status. I don't want to print. And this is the batch that I a batch that I worked on yesterday. So there's 24 items in here because I deleted one of them altogether because I didn't want it. So um, what I forgot to do was change that print status. So I'm going to so just pick the first one, do a control A for selecting all. And I'm just going to pick one and change the print status to already printed because these have already been moved. So you just have to figure out a process um, when if you're using historian, if you're not using historian and you're just dealing with forever storage, then your workflow will be simplified, but just know that there are a few things that you can't do in storage that you can do in historian, like the face uh, tags for facial recognition and I've also noticed that if I try to put in um, tags that are more than one word it breaks them into more than one word um, so if I'm trying to put in like a, a surname and a given name it, I think because I put in a comma it separates them into two different two separate tags so that's the reason I don't one one of the other reasons I don't do it here, I do it all in historian, but it's primarily because I can alter the photos like I showed you 
in terms of making that one photo a little bit better uh, quality. And then also the facial tags and facial, rec facial recognition. So, all right, well, that has been pretty much the entire forever digitization journey. Uh, again, you can, if you haven't seen the other videos, you can go back and watch them. There'll be links to them in the description here. Um, and that is my unboxing of the box that I received. Uh, and I talk about what I have, the slides, the reels, all that kind of stuff. And then the reboxing, so to speak, or packing rather of the materials that I'm going to send and how I got to that. Because you'll notice that a lot of these things are batched while well, you haven't seen all of the collections, but that batch 15 was all wedding. And so it was 16, I believe, I believe all wedding too because what I did yeah what I did was um I took all of the slides and most of them have like a, a a month and a year on them so what I did is I organized them by that and then a lot of them had slide numbers on them and so I put them in order now did they get scanned in order in some cases yes um when I was going back through the slides to get dates to put in and this one I knew that was my parents wedding and I knew what the date was so I didn't have to do it for that for this particular batch but other batches um, I needed some sort of point of reference and so like those Christmases that I have um, a lot of them were developed or made the slides were made in um, like January the following year so like January 71 okay well that was her Christmas 1970 got it so what when i was going through them i noticed that some remained in the exact same order that i had put them in others were in order but in the reverse so they were still in order just reversed so um they kept them intact in terms of that so that was good because as i'm trying to figure out dates and line up the slides with the scans so I can put in rough estimates of dates. Um, that's actually really helpful. So they're still in their little batches. Uh, the slides themselves are still in their little batches and they're all labeled still. So I haven't, I haven't done anything with them yet. Um, eventually I will take them and I will put them back into the cases that I have so that they're not in little plastic baggies that are not really designed for preservation or archival purposes. <laughs> so once I get through this, they will go back into their uh, homes of their containers. So, all right, enough of all of that. That's probably a little too much information, but I thought I'd share it with you anyways. So uh, I hope you have a, a good rest of your day and that you enjoyed this video. If you do, if you did, please uh, like it. And uh, if you're not already following, please follow. All right, that's it. And I will see you next time.